So Kathy. So I'm pulling one down the bed. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to pick a flat. And then I'm going to take the legs right back to my thighs and against the abdomen. And that lifts the bottom of the leg. So once the bottom's off the bed, just as Kathy said, then I think that shows you've got McRoberts in the right position. The second thing is, if you do super pubic pressure, that presses down on the anterior shoulder. That's it, perfectly And I think like a CPR position. And can you imagine, you need to push down on the truck, <coughs> not the bridge. So Kathy's now pushing down and across to get the shoulder slightly in the oblique, so down in the oblique if you can. So if that is unsuccessful, we need to move to internal maneuvers. Just to give you an illustration again using the truck and bridge analogy, can you imagine the bridge is like a heart shape? If you can rotate the shoulders into the 2 o'clock or 10 o'clock, you've got more space to run through the bridge. However, if you can do the post that's like taking the wheels off the truck, it drops it down 10% and you can run it through the bridge. So Kathy, I wonder if we could kind of attend those things, two things. So if I'm going to do an internal maneuver, I need to put my hands scrunched up, we call it the Pringle maneuver, so that's as if you were using the last Pringle out of the carton. Um, and I'm putting my whole hand in at the base, so at 6 o'clock, not leaving my thumb out, but putting my whole hand in with the aim that I'm going to find the posterior arm. Babies often come down the birth canal with white pharaohs, and so you can grasp that. Pull there, yeah. And just a little bit straight up, just like you were putting your arm with your class. The idea of that is that the baby's now one arm's width narrower, and so that anterior shoulder should drop underneath the pubic arch, and you can deliver the baby. Um, any traction I do would be in an axial direction. So never downwards, but axial as if you're pulling along. And this is something we Great. So, so let's say that's the end of the baby for this one, but for some babies the arm is straight, and you can't do the posterior arm very easily. I always think, going back to the analogy, imagine the bridge is like a heart shape. Then can you imagine, if you could rotate the back of the truck to either 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock, there's more room than there is at 12 o'clock. Okay, so this time, I'm putting my whole hand in the game, and I get my hand in at the bottom. And this time, I can't feel the posterior arm, and therefore, all I can feel is the shoulders. So, I'm going to aim to rotate the shoulders. So, I will push from the front to the bottom shoulder, and I'll ask an assistant to do that and I'll have the pressure towards that wall. So, as we do that, we're rotating those shoulders into our oblique, and the shoulder is released and comes up to the seat of the And it's still maybe worth trying some diagnostic traction to make sure that's released. Now, those maneuvers in themselves seem to be effective, certainly in the last series we published, 17,500 consecutive young births. No further maneuvers were required. I think it's important we do the maneuvers that we know as well as we can do. This is the RCOG algorithm which lists all of the maneuvers that we've just demonstrated here now. You can see that we always careful in delivering the baby so that mother and baby should be <coughs> in healthy state. So careful is the mnemonic for the bridge delivery, assisted bridge delivery. What stands for careful? C. C stands for check. What we have to check? Number one, dilatation of the service. That service must be fully dilated before delivery of the bridge. Second is presentation presentation of the baby that what type of bridge is coming. Third is cord. Number two is A. A is await umbilicus. As you know, till the umbilicus is seen, we have to uh, stand by and uh, we, we have not to do anything. So 
wait for umbrellas. R is rotate for arms. E is enter to uh, into the maneuvers. As you know, there are two maneuvers to deliver the breech baby. That is Morris's smelly wheat and uh, love set maneuver. F is flex set. U is back up. Back up means uh, sacrum should be anterior to the doctor. L is lift. Lift the baby onto the mother up but not beyond the 90 degree. This will be more uh, easily demonstrated in the form of video and then you will perform on the miss in the skill lab. This video will review techniques for gradual breach delivery. It is provided as an educational resource. Please follow. For the next few seconds, I will post lists of both prerequisites for an attempted gradual breach delivery. And contraindications to attempting a gradual breach delivery. standard of care when you work. The systematic approach I will review divides the delivery in sections corresponding to the fetal structure being delivered. First is the pelvis, then the legs, third is the umbilicus, fourth the trunk, fifth the arm, sixth the head, and finally we'll discuss entrapment of the afterconning game. Active pushing is usually delayed until at least after the umbilicus has delivered, or if the baby is descending well, maybe even delayed further. Regarding the time frames of the active and passive stages and when to start pushing, there's a lack of clearly stated guidelines. Except the Royal College in the UK's Green College states, if the breach is not visible within two hours of the passive second stage, C-section should normally be recommended. They go on to state, in general, in intervention to expedite breach birth is required if it's a delay of more than five minutes from delivery of the buttocks to the head or more than three minutes from delivery of the malitis to the head. The SOGC in Canada elements the passive second stage to 90 minutes and the active second stage, which is pushing, to 60 minutes. C-section is recommended if these are exceeded. 1. The pelvis. The breach usually presents in a sacrum transverse position like this and will spontaneously rotate into a sacrum anterior position. If it does not, then you're going to need to grasp the baby by the pelvis. Now, the safe way to do this is you put your thumbs over the SI joints, which correspond roughly to the sacral nipples, and then you wrap your fingers around the bony pelvis anteriorly, like this. Do not grasp by the abdomen, that can injure the baby. So holding the baby in that position, thumbs over the SI joints, you just rotate it from sacrum transverse to sacrum anterior. Many recommend that the physician or midwife should keep their hands off the breech at this stage unless it needs to be rotated to SA. Two, the legs. Legs can present in three ways. First is the footling breach. Now, in a footling breach, you want to go straight to cesarean. Do not attempt a vaginal breach delivery. It is too unsafe. Complications include things such as uh, prolapse of the umbilical cord. Second way they can present is a complete breach. It's a bit hard to show with this model, but the baby's legs are flexed in front of the abdomen like this. Now, this will usually deliver spontaneously, but if not, you can just reach up under the baby grasp the foot and lower leg and sweep it out. And then again, we jump under the baby, grasp the foot and lower leg and sweep it out like this. Okay. Third way the baby may present, this is the frank breach, which is like this. Now, in a frank breach, the uh, legs are extended in front of the baby and they may deliver spontaneously or you may need to use Bernard's maneuver. On Bernard's maneuver, you reach up under the baby, get your finger, into the popliteal fossa and then sweep the leg out laterally. So demonstrating on this model, fingers up under the baby, into the popliteal fossa, sweep it laterally, 
the foot may bleed on its own, or you may need to reach up, grasp the foot, and lower leg, and sweep it out. And then you do the same on the other side. Into the popliteal fossa, laterally, grasp the foot, and sweep it out. Three, the umbilicus. Guidelines do not agree on whether or not to routinely handle the umbilicus. The also course, which originates in the USA, states that when the umbilicus delivers, a loop of cord several inches long should be gently pulled down to one, prevent tension on the cord, and two, allow monitoring of the fetal heart by palpation of the cord pulse. The SOGC in Canada states the operator should consider freeing the loop of cord. And on the other hand, the Royal College in the UK recommends that care should be taken to avoid handling the umbilical cord as this may result in vasospasm. Given this variation, you should follow your guidelines where you work. Fourth, the trunk. As with delivery of the umbilicus, guidelines vary. There's a continuum from a non-interventional approach to a more interventional approach. The Royal College in the UK recommends that the fetal trunk should descend spontaneously or with maternal effort and the tactile stimulation of the baby is to be minimized because it can result in the baby reflexively extending the arm up beside the head, which can lead to a compound presentation, or the baby may uh, hyperextend its neck, causing a suboptimal presenting diameter to come through the pelvis. The also program, on the other hand, describes two methods of manually assisting delivery of the trunk if needed. One, you can grasp the pelvis, uh, as I showed before, thumbs over the inside joints, fingers are on the bony pelvis. You want to get gentle traction downwards in a 45 degree angle like this, bringing the baby out. They also recommend, they also describe the lovesick maneuver, which is you again hold the baby in the same way, thumbs on the SI joints, fingers around the bony pelvis, and then you rotate the baby back and forth and through the pelvis. Fifth, the arms. The arms may be in three positions. They may be in front of the trunk, in which case they're likely to deliver spontaneously. They may be standing up beside the head, which is your compound presentation, or you may have the so-called nuchal arm, in which the arm is behind the neck. When you start to think about delivering the arms is when the inferior board of the scapula has appeared. If the arms are extended upwards, they can be delivered by passing two fingers over the baby's back and down along the humerus to, to the elbow and then sweeping the arm out in front of the baby's chest. And then same on the other side. Right. Now let's say that doesn't work and you have a situation where you try to sweep the arms and they just won't go. What do you do? So what you want to do is you want to sweep one arm, use the lobster maneuver to move the baby and sweep one shoulder up under the symphysis. You can then do the maneuver I showed, fingers up over the shoulder, and then sweep the arm anteriorly out. You then rotate the baby the other way so that the posterior arm moves up and then do the same with that arm. Let's say you can't rotate. So you're in this position, you've got one arm delivered and you can't get the posterior arm to rotate. You can then grasp the baby by the feet or the legs, bring up like this and do the same maneuver. You now have more room to work with in sacral hollow. Fingers up over the shoulder, in front of the humerus, sweep the arm in front of the baby's chest and out. Six, the head. The problem with the breach is that the largest part of the baby, the head, delivers last. And in contrast to a cephalic presentation, we unmold it and therefore have a larger diameter. Remember, the base of the skull does not mold. Once the, the arms are delivered, encourage the mother to push until the baby's neck and hairline appear. At this point, the baby's head will be engaged in the pelvis. Any attempt to deliver the head before the hairline appears will result in extension of the neck and thus a larger presenting skull diameter. I will demonstrate the delivery of the head using the Morriso Smelly Beat Maneuver, which works by flexing the fetal head through the pelvis. The baby is placed on the forearm of the operator with the index finger on the one malar eminence and the middle finger on the other malar eminence. You have your assistant uh, giving supercubic pressure. The other hand goes over the baby's back. Index finger over one shoulder, ring finger over the other and uh, middle finger over the occiput. The middle finger gives flexing pressure. You get flexing pressure from the, your, your assistant, and you also move your arms in an arc 
that flexes the baby through the pelvis. Let's see, and just to show the finger positions, so one finger on one male remnant, one finger on the other one. Do not put the finger in your mouth, that can fracture the jaw or dislocate it. And then the other hand is like this. Okay? So let's say you've attempted that for three minutes and it doesn't work. What do you do? So you're going to need to go to the forceps. You're going to need to use a set of pipers. Now, Keelan's will work if you don't have pipers. You're going to wrap the baby in the towel and have your assistant hold the baby up like this. Assistant okay. hold the baby up like this. Now, you do the forceps application as you normally would. So, this is your Keelan's. So, take my left forcep and my left hand to the left side of the internal pelvis. Right? Get, your, get your assistant to hold it or in a horizontal position. Right forcep, right hand, right side of the internal pelvis. Thank you. Lock, and then you deliver the NR like this. Let's say that doesn't work. You have a trap of the after coming again. What do you do? Three options. First option is symphysiotomy. You put local in. Above the synthesis, one, one hand in, two fingers to move the urethra to the side. As you cut down through the uh, uh, cartilage with, with the scalpel, get about half to a third of the way through, and it'll just pop open, giving you more room. Second thing you can do is a cesarean section, so you move, move the baby back up into the uterus and do a cesarean. Now, if the cause of your entrapment is of the cervix, is not fully dilated. You can try Gerson's incisions. Now, Gerson's incisions, uh, you, what you do is you place twin forceps on it, pairs side by side at 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. You then, these should be about 3 to 4 centimeters in. You then make a cut of, of between the two ring forceps at the three locations, and this should open up and give them more room. It's important to have the ring forceps on as remember, you're creating a cervical laceration, which could bleed rather heavily. and the mnemonic is very easy from the start of our life we, when we will go to, when we go to the school we start learning with a b c d e f g so it's the same with the mnemonic for assisted vaginal delivery a ask for help address the patient you have to counsel the patient and the attendants about what you are going to do <coughs> adequate anesthesia or analgesia B. Bladder should be empty before start of procedure. C. Cervix must be fully dilated. D. Determine position. Rule out shoulder distortion. E. Equipment ready. F. Flexion point. You have to apply cup over the flexion point. <coughs> G. Traction. H. Heart traction. In between the contractions, we have to stop giving traction. That is hard the procedure. If no progress in three consecutive tractions, or if cup disengage three times, or if 20 minutes have passed, then go for C section. I. Insulin. Evaluate the patient for episiotomy. J. Ja. Remove vacuum cup when the jaw is delivered. Same mnemonic is for uh, forcep delivery except two things that are extra. F and H. F is forcep ready and H is handle elevated to follow J shape pelvic curve. That is the position of the our blades, forcep blades. Hi, my name is Dr. Jan, and I'll be 
These are a pair of long traction forces. This is the handle. Here we demonstrate the lock and the shank. Here we demonstrate the cephalic curve, which follows the curvature of the piece of paper. This is the pelvic curve, which follows the curvature of the internal pelvis. This is a keyless or set used for rotation. It has no pelvic curve. I'll now demonstrate how to use and how to perform forcep delivery of the long traction forcep. Firstly, hold the left forcep blade with a fingertip touch, very light grip. Using the right hand, protect the child on the wall. And using just my thumb, exerting very little pressure and placing the forceps correctly. They often hold themselves in place. On the other side, I hold the, the other forceps with my right hand. And using my left hand, I guard the jumper again and again, using the thumb to exert very gentle pressure to ensure the forceps to go in place. And ensure the blades lock, but don't lock them. You hold the blade horizontally with the right hand, if you're right handed. And you pull straight with that hand and push down with the limb, generating a diagonal force downwards. This diagram shows the correct hand placement, the direction of pull with white arrows, and the overall direction of force with red arrows. Once the head is crowning, stop pulling horizontally and start pulling upwards. As the head comes forward, you can do an episiotomy at 8 o'clock. You no longer recommend an episiotomy at 45 degrees. Card the perineum to ensure that there's no extension of the episiotomy, and the base is delivered. We remove the forceps as they were applied, and deliver the baby. We hope you find